YouTube War Dog message over. Welcome back, guys, girls, and everybody else to part six of the third mission of the Canadian campaign on combat mission Shock Force 2, entitled Red Barricades. We are going to be picking up from where we left off. Uh, we have, of course, have just had our LAV up here uh, RPG'd, and the crew, rather foolishly, led by Corporal Serdan, have bailed out and run down the Carter Road towards enemy positions instead of towards friendly positions behind them. Uh, which is not too smart. So, we need to move some elements up to this junction here and try and get control of this area out here. I think the RPG came from this building, uh, if I remember correctly. So let's get on to that. We've already got the MG team here under um, Lieutenant DeRocha moving up. Uh, Master Corporal Hubbard here might be able to uh, make some moves forward. I think what we'll do with Master Corporal Hubbard is have him move into this adjacent part of his building. Sorry, I'm trying to stay away from all of the fire. I'm going to have him face that way. Uh, and then we'll bring Master Corporal Mixer with the Pioneers up into that building. And we are rapidly running out of infantry to put into this situation, really. We still have a casualty there, yes we do. Sorry, I still have a little bit of a cough. Um, those of you that watched the last part will be aware that I uh, had that. I still have it. Right, we're gonna have Guardsman Rapier to uh, come out here and try and pick up his uh, his casualty that's in this building who's probably been self-treating for quite some time uh, and have these guys continue to overwatch them from the second floor um, who's this mortar platoon HQ okay I think I'm going to move um, Captain Curling closer as well. I'm going to move him up into this building as swiftly as we can. And we're probably going to need to do a vehicle bump. Although I'm not sure if we've... Well, we, we can, but... It's not ideal. So I think rather than doing an entire bump, we're going to bring this one backwards. Try him to cancel his targeting arc. Bring him around the buildings here. And we'll have him... Uh, bound past the one that's here watching into the playground. We'll leave that one there. I want to try and get through this junction as quickly as possible so the LAV's not stuck in front of the tank. I think the RPG came from that building, or possibly these ones. I don't think it came from these front ones, but uh, for the time being, we'll have that uh, LAV take that position. Right. You, I want to wait for 30 seconds to give that LAV time to get out of the way. Then move down to where he is. And take over his targeting arc. Meanwhile, the Leopard C2 and get across the street and 
take up that position there. Okay. I think that's everything we need to get done. Let's see what happens here in the next turn. That's the uh, tank crew getting shot at. LAV crew rather and they've taken a casualty Zubra Maui we've identified him This is quite the intense battle. Wow, okay. Um, just going to go back 10 seconds or so, 15 seconds, and see what went on with the, uh, the enemy here. I feel like they popped back up or were identified. They engaged us. Rather foolishly engaged us. There was one guy left in there by the looks of things. Who then uh, got absolutely mullered, which is uh, not really a surprise. why we put that LAV there. Right, let's go back to the start of the minute and watch things up here because we've identified a lot of enemy positions in this uh, turn. So somebody starts off shooting at them. The first ones we actually detect is a five-man team uh, over here. One of whom is down to a pistol. Did I see? Yes, this anti-tank guy. Oh, he's engaging with a pistol, I guess. So, the vehicle crew, the driver is killed out or wounded outside the door. The uh, gunner manages to get inside uh, whilst taking some superficial injuries. We have a single ah a single guy up here, which because we're on basic difficulty, we can tell that he's a cell IED guy. Don't know where his IED is, but we know he's a cell IED trigger man. <coughs> that is a, a problem. He starts to get engaged by Corporal Casson. That looks like Zubra Maui's position. There we go. He's in that back building. Oh, we've also identified a five-man team which includes a sniper down in this building. Now the sniper is already injured, which is interesting. Where did that come from? This one, I think. I think almost every building through here is hostile. LAV is not quite there yet, it's still at objective blue. Uh, these guys have cleaned up their casualty already. So 
So what we will have them do is come back through into this building, out to here, sprint across the street, and then start making their way uh, up this way, I think. And we'll put them in this building for now. These guys, I'm going to say, wait 30 seconds, should be long enough for these guys to get into the building beneath them. Then head downstairs, up to there, that'll do. Sprint across to there. And move them up to there. I'm really not too bothered about clearing the playground. I know we've got objective red and green and white that are near there. Uh, I'm more interested in catching Zubra Maui because if we take a look at our briefing, Zubra Maui is worth 100 points. We've already touched objective blue, so we have 10. The AA weapon is also back there near him, so that's worth another 50. So we could get 150, 160 points if you include blue. And we're only missing out on 40 points by not getting the other ones. Um, <clears throat> so that's why I'm more focused on pushing back this way. I think that'll do. The uh, The LAV's already been told to target Zubramawi's building. Or at least to look that way. that and what was it aimed at firing it at the uh, building but the damaged LAV actually protected the building Mike, Mike. I don't think we need to review very much here. Um, this dude could do with being on the same square as his uh, wounded buddy here. See if we can get him treated. I'm going to tell the LAV to attack the building that Zubra Maui is in. I'm going to tell... Uh, Corporal Casson to suppress this building back here in depth. Uh, I'm quite positive now that because the uh, the gunner of the LAV is in this building that there's nobody in this one, this one or this one, or even the ground floor of this one, because it stretches back there. We're also positive there's no one in this one or this one, because they could have engaged us already. Uh, and this back corner one we're not 100% sure of yet. But for that reason, Master Corporal Hubbard is going to push on another building. So we are actually making our way towards Objective Red. Although Red is a you know, one of these checkpoints could have an IED in it, and there is a guy with a cell trigger up here, so it's very likely that that could be his building, or that his uh, detonation point. Alright, we'll see how this goes. There's Zubra Maui, he's trying to fight. Hold up. 
Oh, why are they doing that? Those buildings weren't connected. They're going across the roofs. So they took RPG fire from this building, maybe? Because it spotted them on the roof. Wow. Didn't realize they were going to go over the rooftop to do that. He's still alive. He was still alive. That damaged LAV protecting the guys in that... Uh, that building again. Wow. Okay, so we've killed Zubra Maui, so at this point, I'm pretty sure we would have a lot of points. We also know that there's still. Uh, the AA vehicle, which I think is tucked in between these buildings here. Uh, which we could definitely still destroy. We've done that now. If we bring him out that far, and tell you to immediately target that building, and to turn your targeting arc in that direction. We'll include that back building just in case, but... Wait, can you not do a targeting arc and... No, okay, fine. Just smash that building then. Is that a bit far forward? Maybe. Won't be able to see it from there. I think that's uh, right at the limit of uh, what it can it can do. These guys are still up on the roof. I don't know if I sent them onto the roof or not, or whether the fact that they took RPG fire whilst hunting means that they stopped. But we're going to try and get them down into the building now. have a section of mortars remaining. We could drop them based on where the rooftops are over here. Uh, let's drop four tubes. Medium mission, uh, short duration. I'm looking to knock out the uh, the quad gun, really. So we'll go with armor shells. Uh, do it immediately. That'll take two minutes to call in. The MG doesn't have a lot of ammo left, actually. This is why I'm not really telling it to suppress anything. Uh, but I suppose if we give it 15 seconds of suppression, it's better than nothing. Right, let's see how this pans out. Oh, it's sticking out quite a bit more than I was like. Over. Shot. Out. Flash. Over. Flash. Out. 
God. Over. That building's gonna come down in a second, Ow. and then that quad vehicle's gonna be in the fight. Over. There it goes. Flat out. Shot. Over. Shot. Out. Okay. Not too much that happened during that minute. I am now concerned that we've actually demolished the building that was potentially protecting us from the quad cannon. So I'm just going to tell the LAV to engage, uh, actually, rather than having it engage for the full minute. We'll just say, smash that for 15 seconds. If it's there, we'll do some damage to it, hopefully. Guardsman Peacock, who is now the only one left from his uh, section, I believe. Might even, yeah, might be the only one left from his section entirely. I don't think we've got any other B section, uh, any three section. Oh no, we've got three section A team over that way. So there's three of them left from three section. Uh, you guys should still be suppressing in that direction. Alright, let's see how this goes. Mortars are taking Shot. longer to come in on target than I would have liked. Shot out. Flash over. Flash. Fire for effect over. Okay, they're saying that is on target. Fire for effect. But there's only 20 seconds left in the round. Well, when they finally dialed them in, they were quite effective, but I am going to cancel the fire mission already. Um, they would only fire for a further mi uh, minute, but still, cease check fire. fire. Check fire! Check fire! Um, right, we are going to have this chap creep out a little bit more, and unfortunately... I think the priority needs to be on smashing the building with the IED trigger man in it, even though that means he's potentially going to be exposed to this building at the back, uh, putting RPG fire on him. But if this guy's IED is over here, we definitely don't want him triggering it. So let's see how this goes. Roger, checking fire. still in there, he's not there now. definitely doing some urban remodeling here um, what I want to do is I really want to make enough room to get a tank through into this space but that is going to involve pushing the LAV out a lot further So I guess we won't do that. We'll just say shoot that for 15 seconds instead. I think 
what I will do is have the tank roll into position behind the LAV and potentially I don't even think we need to keep this LAV down here watching long down here because we've practically secured it with the infantry now so we'll just cancel that um, you can reverse and then yourself up this street across there reverse back into the spot where the tank is all right that'll do for now and we'll see the tank down here can also start making its way up that way I guess we'll have the tank wait there Which does mean that our sort of our mortar platoon with the HQ and the mortar and the, and well the jeep are a little bit exposed, but they have still got an LAV protecting them, and the enemy hasn't made many moves at all on that flank. So I'm not too worried about moving the bulk of the force up onto this flank. However, I think that is probably going to do it for part six. If you have watched the video, thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please do comment, like, and subscribe if you've enjoyed. Or even comment if you haven't enjoyed. And let me know why you're not enjoying it or why you didn't enjoy it. If you've watched all the parts up to this point, thank you very, very much indeed. Um, feel free to check me out on Twitch or on Patreon to help support me as a content creator. I've got a bunch, a bunch of wonderful Patreons, patrons uh, that are helping me to... Uh, hopefully turn this into a full-time job i mean i'm doing it as a full-time job right now but the pay is not quite there yet but uh, my patrons are leaps and bounds helping me to get to that point so i really 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 appreciate them so so deeply uh, i will see you all for part seven thank you very much for watching but for the time being it's going to be war dog out